Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Our last Thursday session of the year. Not sure where we'll, where we'll traverse during this, but glad you're joining us and welcome. Hey, we, and we have with us today from Charlottesville, Virginia, a retired University of Toledo School of Law, Professor Ben Davis, now teaching a mostly on, online course for the University of Illinois School of Law in Chicago, right? And hey, coming up, you're going to be teaching at uh, Washington Lee next year. Washington yep. Lee, right? Yeah, in the spring. Yep. Great. Hey, noted scholar and hey, Jeff Portnoy. And your partner at Cades, one of our most experienced and respected attorneys, constitutional and First Amendment scholar, and commentator on various University of Hawaii sports events as part of his history as well. Jeff, Ben, hey, are you glad to be coming out of 2021? Glad this year is ending or? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, this year I was 65, and I'm just wanting to let you know that I am really happy 65 is over. <laughs> it was a hell of a year uh, with all the things that went on in it. So, uh, I uh, yeah. So uh, I'm more a little more hopeful than uh, I was about how will maybe do well uh, or do well in this uh, pandemic. Uh, I saw a really interesting slide on Rachel Maddow last night where uh, he, some studies had been done at the uh, nursing home and they showed the, the rates of increase in uh, people getting infected uh, looking back the past couple months. And so it had, at the top, it had the unvaccinated and that was rising pretty rapidly last month or so. And then a little lower than that, they had the people who had had, uh, you know, the two shots or the one shot J and J, and that was rising too. And then it had the people who had the booster and the booster was right flat there around zero. Um, this is coming out of research at, uh, at, uh, at nursing homes and, you know, given, but all the horrendous things that I think they said that one out of every hundred Americans over 65 has died in this uh, in this uh, in, in this pandemic. Um, you know, it's really good news that those folks in those nursing homes, if they get boosted, look like they they won't be part. You know, the carnage won't be so bad. If I can say it like that. So that's one piece of optimism I have actually. Um, well, I, 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 I don't have any optimism. Uh, I think 2021 was a miserable year. Uh, not for me personally, but I think for the world and for the country. Uh, starting with what happened on January 6th, and it hasn't gotten any better. And frankly, I think 2022 will be worse. Uh, not only with COVID. But politically, I think it's pretty clear that uh, the Biden administration is stuck in the mud. It has accomplished virtually nothing. It's going to accomplish even less next year. None of its major legislation, other than the one compromise bill on bridges and tunnels, is going to get through. Voting rights are being eroded. The National Voting Rights Bill today is dead uh, because at least two Democratic senators are not going to move on the filibuster, uh, Build Back Better is dead. So I'm sorry to be so pessimistic. And then in November of 2022, if things continue to go the way they are, rising inflation, more hatred, more Fox dribble, uh, I don't see anything good coming up. We got a lot of negative things to talk about all next year. Yeah. <laughs> and well, with that, Happy New Year. <laughs> And, and Jeff, with all that positivism, I just want, I feel wonderful. <laughs> I, I'm happy to hear. I, I see we drove away everybody else, by the way, for our last show. We'll blame it on, we'll blame it on Chuck. But uh, yeah. I, 
I'm, I'm happy to hear any uh, political, social, or economic reason you think we should have optimism on any of those fronts. All right. Well, I, I will start off with, uh, I recognize that if we don't know where it's going to go, but I do think this January 6th committee, peeling back the layers in a so way. What? But so what? Who cares? Yeah, well, I think that. <laughs> I mean, the, I, I, the, third of, the third of the country could care less and don't believe anything that is allegedly coming out. And, you know, it's yeah. a nice exercise in uh, Democratic PR. Where is it going? I, 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 I think that that's the thing is I don't know where it's going, but what it's doing is just peeling back layers. And, and, and I think it's great. To, you know, we've talked about having common facts at some point in time. And I understand there are people who probably think everything's in a bubble and all that. But I still think that it's really interesting what they are doing step by step. Uh, so I have some optimism about that. For at a minimum, there will be something that will lay out just how insidious this whole thing was or is that, that we've been living with January 6th and all that. We already know that. Yeah, but uh, you and I may know it, but I'm not sure that uh, the rest uh, of the uh, a third of the people could care less. The only good thing, by the way, now that I'm thinking about it, is maybe we'll see Trump's tax return. Right. <laughs> well, what I what I see, what makes me feel good is that you know there are like all these people who are coming from that world, right, who are apparently testifying and voluntarily. Um, you know, people like uh, the guys, the chief of staff for uh, Pence, who, who was, you know, basically hung out to dry. And uh, and these some of the organizers down on the mall part of it who felt like they got played. OK, that is all good stuff in terms of bringing light. OK, you may not think that it's much, but I think it's important that light is brought because, no, you know, the what we've been watching for the last month has been 11 months of uh, a, a lot of people trying to say, don't look at that. Don't look at that. We don't want to hear about it. You know, and now it's starting, you know, we get the, we get the emails from the folks at Fox. We get the emails from the members of Congress. We don't know who they are, all that. So that's just a little thing. I think that bringing a light is a positive thing for next year. Hey, Ben, you know what, you know what happens when you put a light on a cockroach? <laughs> It just it runs. It it just moves to another location. Okay? Yeah, I know. I know. So but, I, but at least unless at least you step on it, song, unless you, you, you know? unless you step on it, it continues to exist just in another location. Well, yes, and in fact, it kind of warms my heart here to be reading about these people starting to talk about criminal prosecutions of uh, Donald Trump, because I did some research on that kind of state or federal prosecutions of a president years ago on the torture stuff. And I'm listening to all these people talk about it, a former president. And it's, it warms my heart to say, gee, I guess that research I did for Vince Bugliosi back in 2009 or 10 might, you know, might be of use to somebody at, at, uh, on my SSRN space. So because we don't usually prosecute the folks at the top, right? And you got the folks that the who went in, right? The low level folks, and uh, they all get prosecuted. And it's like what malfeasance at the bottom and misfeasance at the top, right? Mistakes are made. Anyway, I, that's one thing I'm optimistic about. Uh, on on the rest of uh, the uh, authoritarian, uh, what is it? The authoritarianization of the American uh, community. Please always remember the wonderful line from the book, Every Man Dies Alone, which is the main thing is you fight back, okay? So you just keep fighting back. Personally, I'm more worried about all the billionaires and all that who are probably behind all of this. That's what they like to treat people like the trash see people like trash like they did those folks who always in Mayfield, Kentucky, who were at the candle plant. And they were told they couldn't go home uh, or they'd lose their job. That's, that's exploitation work. That, you know, but that kind of stuff's being brought out. It's just how awful and the violence against 
of ordinary people that uh, people are having to live with. And it's good that that comes out. It's good that there are lawsuits that are coming out to try to hold the uh, the the people who uh, do those kinds of stupid things uh, to account. I mean, it's stupid management. I mean, uh, okay, case. okay, okay, Ben, you've convinced me. I'm looking forward to next year. Oh, really? I can hardly wait. All these okay. good things are happening and going to happen. I, it, you've made me so happy. <laughs> hey, I was so depressed before the show started. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm touched that I, I played that role for you. you I, 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 and I, you should yeah. be. You, you should be touched. Uh, you know, I mean, here I am wearing my Christmas Jerry Garcia T-shirt, which is saying, have a Jerry Christmas. So, you know, you've got to have that attitude that... Uh, it it will get better. All right, it Chuck. Back to you. <laughs> so where might that come from? If there's going to be any shift toward more positive direction. Hey, Jeff, you've raised questions about whether it's even possible. Ben, you've suggested that there may be areas where the light can shine. But where's where's the energy? Where's the movement? Okay, I will. All right, I will start with this. Is where I think a really big movement is coming from. People who are fifty five and older are quitting work. They're saying to hell with it with regards to this pandemic at number at rates that are incredible. Uh, apparently, like four million a month or something like that, and it's, it's and and so they, they, all these companies and everything that are saying, oh, we can't find any workers. It's the folks who had the highest COVID risk are saying, see ya, we're not listening to this. We're going to, you know, if they've got enough money to pull it off, I know it's all that, but apparently the numbers are really substantial of the high, uh, of the, 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 the higher end of the, of the uh, scale of, uh, of the, the, the age group uh, retiring, okay? So I think that that is tremendous because it is putting pressure on all these companies that are sitting here and saying, gee, why can't we get any workers? Because, and they're not raising salaries or increasing health benefits at the same time, right? So that's a piece of optimism I have is that there's a supply side issue of workers that is developed because a lot of, uh, of, of, of us older folks have been leaving and it's gonna create opportunities for companies that want to take it to get more money into the pockets of people, all right. Oh, so let me I see know. if I let me see if I understand it. It's a good thing that the experienced workforce is quitting, so that new people just out of high school can try to take their jobs. Is that it? All the fifty fives and over who have worked at a place for thirty years have the experience, the knowledge the uh, whatever, are going to be replaced by a bunch of high school graduates. That's good? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, what I think is good is that those 55-year-olds and up aren't being fired. They're saying, see ya. Don't no, I, under I understand. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. How and, is that good for the economy? Well, well, the reason I think that that's good for the economy is that if you're going to get people in there to do the work that you want to do, you can't be playing the old game of people paying people not much, or, or uh, and, and, and being you know. I love these companies that are totally surprised they can't find any workers, and I'm like, well, you know, I thought basic economics, right? Increase the pay, increase the benefits, you attract the workers, right? Increase the improve the way you work to attract the work. You know, um, I think that that's a positive thing. A second thing that I'm really positive about is I just saw something happen. Uh, it's a directive that is being proposed in the European Union about all these Uber type, DoorDash kind of job things that people have, where all those people are being considered presumptive employees, and so. It, as a consequence, the kind of protections that employees have um, are, will, will flow to all these people who are essentially, I think, are being rude, if I could say it by that, in these 
DoorDash or or, or uh, Uber situation um, that uh, as as kind of gig employees and things like that. I think this the idea of creating the uh, notion of presumptive employees is a revolutionary idea in uh, in the space we're living in. That is something that hopefully will migrate over here. I know we don't have the same kind of protection that uh, the Europeans have. But the well, idea I'll make it. I'll make a disclosure before I tell you that I'm not sure that it's the greatest thing you, as you point out. I represent Lyft. Let me tell you, there are thousands of these gig workers. The last thing they want to be is employees, and all that goes with it negatively as well as positively. Work hours, work days, work rules, you name it. I interview a bunch of these drivers, believe me. Yes, there are some that are want to be employees, but there are just as many who say, no way right. do I want to be involved. I want to be an independent contractor. I'll drive when I want. I'll do everything else that I want to do. So this big thing about how these gig workers are being abused they ought to talk to all the gig workers. Yes, I know there's an organized movement, even in the United States, to unionize these workers or make them employees. But uh, as you saw in California, when they defeated a, re a, a, a resolution uh, to make them employees, there's a lot of gig workers who say, I don't want it. I want the freedom of being an independent contractor. So it's not one-sided. Oh, yeah, no one says it's one sided. And, you know, uh, I love, uh, you know, what is it? Since 1973, with the decline of unions in the United States of America and all these people saying, I want to be my independent step and independent contractor, contract and all that. And, and what is to happen to the, what is the average wage rate across this country in terms of the growth and productivity and who gets the money and who, you know, who actually got the raise and things like that? Yeah, I understand there are lots of people who think I want to be independent and all that stuff. Right. Uh, you know, because we've been that's been beaten into our heads. It's capitalism. It's capitalism. Yeah, that's right. Capitalism. Yeah, but it used to be capitalism included <laughs> unions. It included, you know, you know, like well, well, labor laws there, or something too. There, you know what I mean? there, I'm playing devil's advocate here, but no, there's we're having a, fun here. It's all right. It's there, okay. there's there's a lot of reasons why unions have essentially gone away. Because workers don't want them. They don't want to be paying hundreds and thousands of dollars in dues. And there are yeah. some employers, there are some employers who treat their employees in a way that the employees have rejected unions. So I yeah, did read the know, other day. I, I did I did read the other day though that after a decade of union membership virtually evaporating, because unions have been worthless there now seems to be a little bit of a renaissance in people looking for unions and wanting unions. So maybe that's for those people who um, are wrong union people. And I'm not, I'm not arguing unions haven't done a no. lot of good, but, but, and I'm not on the factory line, but there are, you know, at least a significant number of people who uh, don't either want or care for no. a union. I, look, I understand. I know there are lots of people who want to think of themselves as that they're going to be, you know, working hard and they're going to get promoted and they're going to be make it on their own and they did it all by themselves and all that stuff. I mean, the old American story a million times over, right? Okay. And then what happens is that uh, somewhere along the way, it doesn't work out that way. And so the American dream of, of doing it on your own all of a sudden comes crashing down on them. But there are people also who are working, you know, what, two, three jobs at the same time trying sure. to keep things going yeah. with both members of the family as well as the kids doing it. And why are they working at those levels? Because the pay, the pay they need to keep the life going in a situation where the productivity gains aren't going to them. You know, all I'm saying is that Maybe some people get the idea, just a little bit of the idea, like those folks who just unionized at a Starbucks in Buffalo, New York, um, um, that, you know, maybe if we join together a little more uh, in terms of us negotiating with management as opposed to the other way around, about uh, was, as opposed to being just one-on-one, -on -one, that, you know, it might work for you. Now, I'm going to fully stipulate that there are enormous amounts of money and sophisticated uh, 
consultant and all that stuff who spend enormous amounts of money working for companies, pick your company name if they're doing it, to not have this happen. I mean, you have places, I think, was it, was it Google? Where they are, or is it Amazon, where they are like monitoring the phones of people to see if they're together, you know, and then they fire them way earlier before you're doing unionizing efforts, right? You know, I mean, there's stuff that's done on the management side that is clearly about not, you know, maintaining control, right? Maintaining control and not having any other forces that operate. But I got to tell you, Having looked at uh, one of my 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 son's godmother is a lawyer in France who has brought cases on behalf of unions about warehouse workers in Amazon and about workers for the post office. That union power is something that could help keep people alive. Yeah, yeah. European economies are certainly booming. I, I, I they're certainly a, a symbol. Come on. Hey, Germany, yeah. Britain, France, those are countries in turmoil that almost rival ours. I do agree with you, though, as you know, from all year. And, and I think it's a very bad thing, and I don't see any change. That's why I'm not optimistic. We have two societies, and increasingly two societies in the United States. It's really a bad situation. So what yeah. the remedies are, all I'll I can tell, tell you is I don't see them. people more. The remedies are pay, pay people, people more. more. Inflation's at six percent. Yeah, yeah, that's that's because the people who, who are trying to keep their their profit margins up while they have to pay people more. That's the inflation thing. That's the only thing. Oh, going on you here. you socialist, you. Yeah, I know I'm a socialist because I'm I'm just a market guy. All us fifty five year olds and up have left. God. So we, we we've given you all this space to the folks below us in age to be able to equilibrium here so that they can get a new equilibrium so they can get paid better they can have their more money to take care of their kids you know all that stuff if that's socialism then i'm like you guys are on another planet than than than, than me that's just that's just business you know that's just business you i'm worn us? down then has worn me down I, I i i just can't respond anymore I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. I mean, I, I, I'm probably the more hyper capitalist of them all here, man. I'm like, maybe you gave yourself you gave yourself away when you said you watched Rachel Maddow. Ah, is that what it was? Okay, all right, all right. I, I used to watch Hannity, okay, but it just got to be too much, you know. Like all those guys leaving Fox now, it's like they can't take it anymore. It's just got to be too much propaganda. I would say yeah. that's an optimistic thing that Chris Wallace is going to CNN. I think that's really great. But it, leaving Fox, that's a bad sign. Yeah, I know. But, you know, they, you know what, 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 I think that the thing that I hear that all the adults, that, all the adults are leaving the room. Right. Well, they, you know, they, they say that the, the argument now is that they're respecting their audience, which whatever that means. But, you know, meaning meeting people. What is, uh, what is the term? Soma. They're, sending, they're speeding Soma to people, right? Like in Brave New World. Keep everybody, just keep sucking on that Soma, you know? That's what I like about what's going on with this 1-6 to come around is, hey, you know, you can, you may not read it, but it's coming out. It's all coming out. Like, the great thing I just heard is, you know, Gomer filed a lawsuit against Pence somewhere about 10 days before January 5th. Trying to say Pence had the authority to, uh, you know, throw out, cast out votes. Was, was that Go Gomer File? Gomer yeah, File? Go yeah, Gomer, <laughs> Gomer File from Texas. He, he did that, right? Uh, you know, did Mr. Gomer get this idea off the top of his head one day? I'm going to do this. You, get, you know, you see the pieces come out. You know what I mean? I he's love it. Just, he's just representing his constituents. Of course. Of course. Of course. And, you know, and it's just, you know, is, what is it, the uh, money, uh, what is it, uh, Representative Clyburn said that uh, money is the uh, lifeblood of politics. So he's just representing some money that wanted to be a certain way. So, 
Yeah. So maybe you folks, if you don't think about it, think clearly from what you brought out, there are major changes in the composition and priorities of working conditions, the workplace. And there are major changes in the composition and the attitudes, values, priorities of the workforce. And those are major, major components of where voting shifts have traditionally been the difference maker. Yeah, yeah. So maybe one of the things that we're perceiving is that there are areas of change which the media hasn't picked up on, analyzed, evaluated. And they're huge areas. And they're areas that directly connect to the working class, the middle and even lower middle working class. And these things could make a difference. And the factors you're talking about are people who are thinking about those factors because that's their lifeblood. Yeah, yeah. So maybe there is. And maybe the uncertainty itself is cause for some optimism because Jeff pointed out so well, so articulately, it's the things that we know, the things that appear to be more predictable, more certain, that give us the greatest cause for pessimism. So maybe it's what we don't know, what we can't predict, and the workplace and the working conditions and the workforce that may be the seeds of change. Well, I think wrap it's... up 2021, 20, 22 in our last minute. Ben, any last words? I, I, I just think there's something about those 4 million people who are leaving the workforce each month right now who are of the high end. That is a, a really fundamental trend that I think is a part of it is a reflection. Also, the people switching jobs so much, I think that people are sitting down after this, uh, going through the pandemic so far and are saying, what is going on in this life I'm living in this job? And they're deciding that this is not me and they're moving to something else. And I think that's a good thing and a positive. I started with my opinion and it hasn't changed. <laughs> 2022 looks like a year that will make 2021 look like it was a good year. I don't yeah. see anything on the horizon politically, socially, economically. And I think we're going to see the results of all of this pessimism in November. And I think that will make us, at least those of us on this show, very sad when the Republicans very likely take over Washington except for the presidency. And don't don't put Donald Trump aside. He's got more lives than uh, than uh, Dionysus. Who was it? Who is the great god of? Right. You know, yeah. uh, he's not going anywhere. Unfortunately. No, so, you know, you got to be an optimist. optimist all right. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks for a fantastic 2021. Maybe it's what we don't other. know about 2022 that will keep us coming back and keep us doing our deep dives into this stuff. Folks, thanks for sticking with us. Come back and see us again in 2022. We'll be back and support Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you all. Bless you all. Take good care. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.